Um, you know, uh, I think just like the culture and the personality uh, of who they are, you know, uh, talking with Coach McDermott, uh, I mean, it was sort of clear, you know, um, like I definitely was so excited to be a part of like the Bills culture, the, the Bills mafia, everything about it, you know, uh, I feel like it's just hard nosed, blue collared, you know, and I feel like that that's me head to toe. Just to follow up quickly, did you know about that or did, was that something that they sold you on once you spoke with Coach McDermott and others? I mean, shoot, no, I, I knew about it, you know. Uh, I mean, shoot, I knew uh, Deion Dawkins pretty well, you know. So I always see his stuff and I was able to keep in contact with him, you know, and, and through him I was really able to just really see what the Bills were about, you know, throughout like the past few years. And uh, I mean, shoot, we played them – I played them last year, you know, I mean, sort of kicked their butt. <laughs> um, so I definitely knew knew about them prior, uh, and they were definitely on the radar. <laughs> Thanks. What's up, Tyler? Uh, Matt Perino from Syracuse.com. Uh, congratulations. And I guess for, you know, fans that are going to start really getting to know this roster and coming across your name, what would you tell them in terms of what the Bills are getting as a player? Um, I mean, definitely just a, a hard-nosed physical football player, you know, uh, just, I mean, shoot, I've been here for four years so far, you know, uh, and just straight off just, just work ethic, you know what I mean? Just give me a job and I'm going to get that job done, um, you know, and, and that's definitely translated into my play, you know, uh, I've been fortunate enough, uh, you know, I, I want to be out there on defense, but, uh, my role on special teams, you know, is just so important and, uh, I mean, all that hard work and stuff and studying and it has just been able to let me go out on the field and, and be successful out there, you know. And, uh, shoot, I can't wait to do that here. Thank you. Tyler, John Worrell with the Associated Press. Welcome aboard. How you doing? Good, good. Just um, you seem to be the odd man out because you don't have a Carolina connection to these coaches, uh, um, given all the offseason moves that the Bills have made. What is it in particular that kind of like struck you about the Bills and how they've been developing, you know, whether it was what seeing what they did last year against the Steelers or just, you know, how has your thought process moved towards Buffalo and, and what they're doing? Uh, I mean, sure, you, you could see it, you know, it's not, it's not hard to see uh, that something special is going on over here, you know, uh, I mean, Coach McDermott and his staff have come in up to Buffalo, you know, and, and done an excellent job, I think, thus far, uh, and I think it's only going to get better, you know, um, so having those guys there, I mean, it, it really was sort of an easy decision to be like, hey, I want to go play for those guys. Thanks a lot. No problem. Okay, I think I'm up. Uh, thanks for joining us. This is Mark Gaughan from the Buffalo News. Um, I guess, uh, first of all, uh, you know, in the base defense, were you uh, Vince Williams' primary backup in Pittsburgh? And do you see, like, what is your best, you see yourself as a Sam linebacker and partly middle linebacker? Or what? how do you view that, your best spot at linebacker? Um, you know, uh, it's funny. Uh, the defense, when we ran the 3-4 the in Pittsburgh, it's definitely – I didn't realize how different it was going to be from the 4-3, you know, until I got in it. Because um, I was fortunate to run the 4-3 in college. Uh, and we sort of had like an a NFL scheme. So definitely learning the defense now, it's definitely bringing like stuff's definitely coming back to my, uh, to me mentally uh, from college. But, uh, but shoot, I definitely think I'm like a Mike, uh, definitely in the middle, you know. Uh, in college, I was able to play. I played the Will. I was able to play the Mike, you know. Um, so I definitely think I'll be able to to play both um, once once I get an understanding of this whole playbook. And then, uh, you know, just kind of, uh, yeah, obviously you've, you've, you've got so many tackles as a special teamer the last four years. Uh, you know, what do you think uh, sets you apart from what makes you such a good coverage man on special teams? You know, I just got a, a nose for the ball, you know. Uh, wherever the ball, I sort of just see ball, go get ball. I mean, it, it's – People always ask me, like, what do you do? And it's, I really just tell them, man, I'm just running down there as fast as I can. I'm not going to let anybody block me, and, and I'm going to beat you to the ball, you know. Uh, that's, what, that's what I love about the special teams. Um, just because you have – you don't have 70 snaps out there to run down on kickoff. You know, you only got maybe, like, three or four. So, you got to make them count. And uh, 
And I mean, shoot, I just love going out there, just telling all the guys, like, listen, like, you guys are going to have to meet me at the ball because I'm going to go make this tackle. <laughs> and uh, guys would get mad at me, but then, shoot, we would run down there, I'd go make the tackle, you know? But just being able to challenge one another, uh, I just love that part of it. Walter Ross from the CBS station out in Rochester. Obviously, you've had a really different – you've had a very long road to get to the NFL. Now you're four years in. All that hard work, what do you think that says about you as a player and what do you bring to Buffalo? Um, you know, I think that says everything about me. Uh, you know, because I mean, you hear it all the time, NFL stands for not for long. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm still chugging along, you know, doing whatever I got to do to – to stick to stay around you know and I think that uh I think I'll fit in perfect with Buffalo uh I think it really is going to be a perfect fit and one quick follow-up obviously you played with Dion in college I had the, pl the pleasure of covering both of you then what's so exciting about getting to reunite uh on the field here at New Era I mean you you guys know Dion I mean his personality says it all you know uh once you just get around him I mean he like lifts you, lifts your spirit up instantly. You know, you can't, all you do is laugh when you're around him. Uh, so I'm definitely excited to get back around Dion. Thanks, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Sal Capaccio here, WGR Radio in Buffalo. Uh, congratulations. Welcome to Buffalo. You know, you talked, yeah, you're welcome. You, um, you talked about the play to play mindset of special teamer and you and how you've been able to lead the uh, league in tackles over the last four years in special teams. What about the career mindset of special teamer? And that's how you've, that's how you've made your, your money in this league. That's how you've survived in this league mostly. And just having that mentality of, you know, some guys come in and say, I'm not going to be on special teams. I'm not doing that. You, you've made this a living for yourself. Absolutely. You know, uh, I mean, shoot, I want to be out there uh, playing defense. You know what I mean? I want to be out there every snap. Uh, that, that, it kills me not being out there. Um, but shoot, I, I understand real quick, you know, if, if I can't be out there, how am I going to make an impact on the game, you know? And, and special teams is a great way to do that if you're not a starter uh, for all guys at a bunch of different positions. Uh, and that's how you get your foot in the door. I mean, there's so many guys that started out on special teams, you know, playing for so many years till they finally get a chance, you know? I think of Lorenzo Alexander all the time, you know? That was a guy that I actually, like, would watch film on, uh, like, last offseason, you know, just trying to – see what he would do, and uh, and then, shoot, you look at him, he was on special teams, special teams, then he gets a contract starting linebacker, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, you guys know about him. <laughs> um, so, shoot, just just being able to see guys like that, you know, it definitely definitely keeps you keeps you going, and you just got to have that motor. You just got to love it, and uh, I definitely think that's what I do. Thank you. Hey, Tyler, Matt Glab again. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Uh, quick question for you just about your workout schedule. Has it changed at all since uh, the virus outbreak? Were you doing anything differently before? What do workouts look like now for you? How have you been staying in shape? Um, you know, I've been very uh, fortunate enough to still be able to, like, work out every day. Uh, so my, my uh, schedule really hasn't changed. You know, I'm still working out in the weight room and then still being able to get out on the field. Uh, quietly like you know what I mean secretly we're out there whether it's early in the morning late at night but we definitely just figure a way to to get the work in and uh and yeah so I'm definitely feeling good at this point right now cool have you been using like a friend's gym your own gym how have you been able to get your weightlifting in yeah so uh I've been fortunate uh we've been I've been able to go to a friend's gym um and train there uh so we've been getting some good work in there uh but yeah, other than that, it's just it's just sticking in the house all the day. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Hey, Tyler. Chris Brown from BuffaloBills.com. Welcome to Buffalo. Um, I wanted to play off of Mark's question a little bit. I mean, you were an enormously productive linebacker in college, you know, 100 tackles every season, all four years. Um, and there's a, a certain amount of instinct that goes into that, along with film study and the like playing off of maybe what you were talking about in terms of get ball, see ball on special teams, how did you kind of translate that productivity to the special teams part of the game in the NFL? Did you have to apply 
similar kinds of instincts, or is it just pure all-out effort when it comes to special teams and it's nothing more than that? I mean, no, there's, there's still more that goes into it. You know, uh, uh, definitely just studying your opponent. I mean, just how you'd watch film uh, on offense and defense, you know, that's how I do it on, on special team, able to break it down, analyze it. You know, uh, if I know the call we're running, how you watch film, you can figure out, okay, who's going to block me on, on this kickoff, you know? Um, and you figure out those things. And then uh, when you go out on the field and, and you, you do it, you translate it, you see the results, and it's just like, man, like, this is awesome, you know? So it just keeps you, it just keeps you going, uh, the mental grind of it. Because uh, once you see the results, it, it's awesome. And how much, how much do you have to mix up your approach to opponents knowing as productive as you are, you're going to be a marked man on special teams. How much do you have to mix up your approach to kind of keep them off balance and guessing? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, shoot, I remember when, when I was a rookie, they, someone told me, like, man, if you're not, if you're making plays, like, that's good. But, like, once you're making plays, getting double teamed every time, like, then, then that's, then you're doing something, you know? So, shoot, that's, ever since then, that's just been a goal. You know, I'm trying to, I want to be getting double teamed every time. Uh, I want that challenge. I want everyone to be, locked in you know what I mean because obviously it's going to free somebody else up but then shoot I believe in myself and my technique and my preparation that I'm going to still be able to beat the double team you know what I mean so uh it's it's really just at the end of the day you just got to study uh the preparation but then it just comes down to the will to want to go make a play thanks Hey, Tyler, John Scott again. We've talked so much about your role on special teams, but you did mention it, it kills you not to be out there in a more regular fashion on the defensive side of things. How much of that was part of your conversation with the Bills and making a decision in regards to having the possibility to have a larger role on the defensive side of things and become more than just a special teamer? Um, absolutely, man. I mean, shoot, that, that, that's still my goal. You know, I want to be a starting linebacker in the NFL, you know? Um, and I mean, shoot, when I, when I first got out to Pittsburgh, you know, I was behind some, some good guys. I had like Timmons and Shazier, you know? Um, so those are some good guys to be behind, but, uh, but shoot, I backed up Shazier, you know, I would go in for him, uh, when he would need a blow. I might only be in there for four or five plays a game, but shoot, I was getting in. Um, and then unfortunately I had a shoulder injury um, my second year, which limited to like a lot of my time getting out there. But, uh, but other than that, it's really just been a, a backup. You know, I might get one game here or there. I got the a Falcon start um, two years ago um, because of injuries. And, uh, you know, I think once you look at the film and see what I could do out there, I'm still doing the same thing. You know, I'm still making a bunch of plays. I'm not, I'm not the fastest guy, but my preparation allows me to get where I need to be, you know, to make up for that. And uh, I still think I do that pretty well. Thanks. Just to check, Tyler, uh, where are you speaking to us from? What city are you in? And then uh, what would you just say is your most memorable or most satisfying moment or game as a Steeler? Um, well, right now, I'm currently out in Pittsburgh right now. Uh, still sort of locked down out here. Uh, but, um, but yeah, but shoot, my most memory, memorable game, um, honestly, I would have to go back to, it was my second year to start the year, I blocked a punt, um, versus the Cleveland Browns, like start the season off, um, so that just sort of really just sort of set the tone, you know, and it's funny, like, right before I did that, we were on the sideline just saying, like, man, like, I'm gonna go get this and, and start the season off right, you know, and then, just to be able to go do it, uh, I mean, shoot, it was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Tyler Sal Capaccio here again, WGR. What do you remember about the Sunday night game last year when the Bills came in, uh, whether that's their preparation or their special teams, how they approached the game? And what did you think when you saw the Steelers Sunday night in Buffalo on this year's schedule? <laughs> Uh, I mean, shoot, uh, we, we were excited. I was excited last year, you know, uh, just because you, you just see the team on a rise. I mean, it's really, I was saying it earlier, uh, it's not hard to, to miss what's going on up in Buffalo. You know, you can see something brewing. Um, so that definitely was, was something we were looking for. We knew it was going to be a tough test. And shoot, they came up to Heinz Field and sort of whooped us pretty good, you know. Um, 
I mean, shoot, I remember the <laughs> after the. Uh, I, I know I've heard some people have brought it up to me already, but I knew exactly what happened after the Renegade song. Um, <laughs> so I'm hoping maybe uh, next year we can I can sort of make a play right when we get the music going. <laughs> Hey, Tyler, John Warrell, once again, given your beard and your, I, I see you've got a nickname, Dirty Red or something like that, which kind of like s speaks to what we're seeing some of your outgoing personality here. You seem to be a blue collar guy who seems to be a perfect fit for Buffalo. And what do you know about the city in that sense, you know, whether it's Bill's Mafia or, you know, everybody talk, everybody knows about the, you know, the table crashing stuff, just you seem to be fit for this town. Absolutely. You know, uh, I mean, shoot, uh, my journey has definitely not been easy, you know, to get this far. Uh, I mean, coming out of high school, I had no scholarship offers. You know, I had to go to prep school. I was actually in, uh, I went to a prep school, Milford Academy up in New Berlin, New York. Uh, so I went up there and then shoot, coming out of there, my only scholarship was Temple, you know, and I went there and, and just made the best of it, you know. Um, and I, I mean, the rest is, it speaks for itself, you know. Um, just really just hard nose. I mean, shoot, dad's worked two jobs his whole life. You know, that's when I go back home, I stay home. I go work with them if, if he needs some help, you know. So, I mean, that's just, just really who I am and, and, and what I come from. And I just feel like Buffalo is just, is that, you know what I mean? Just a blue collared, hardworking town, you know what I mean? And uh, I mean, I'm really excited. 